Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I am going to be trying three new makeup products with you guys. I was really excited about all three of these, so I put them all in one video. We're gonna be talking about the ABH Concealer, the Too Faced Cinnamon Swirl Eyeshadow Palette, and the brand new Patrick Ta Major Volume Mascara. So if you wanna see my thoughts, see how I get this look, all that good stuff, then just keep watching. First product that I'm gonna cover is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Magic Touch Concealer. I didn't expect to pick this up, but I was in Sephora a few days ago and I was like, hmm, and magically it appeared at my house. So <laughs> I actually have used this before. I tried it for the first time yesterday. So this isn't a first impressions, which is nice. I can give you some real thoughts. So this is $29. It should be in store at most Sephora's at this point. On the Sephora website, there's a few shades that are out of stock, but you can also get it on the ABH website. Ulta, pretty readily available. But this is $29, and this is supposed to have a medium to full coverage, lightweight, corrects, brightens, blurs, conceals, blending into a natural second skin finish. So I ended up with the shade number seven. This guy, let's see, what are the deets? Made in Italy has a, huh, okay, so... The bottom of this concealer says six month. I know it's not a shelf life, but we call it a shelf life. Six month shelf life, basically how long you can have it before it goes bad, which that's a hot debate how accurate that is. But anyways, just so you know, it says six month here. And then on the box, it says 12 months. I mean, I don't listen to that anyways, but just so that you are aware. And I'm gonna show you what the applicator looks like. She's pretty, pretty fat, you guys. This is a fat concealer one. And I love this color on me if you are around my skin tone seven is awesome it's not too brightening but it's just brightening enough i'm just gonna leave that amount on i'm gonna blend it out with my beauty blender so that you can see how she looks it's not the lightest weight concealer that i have you can see that bit traveled a lot so you don't need a ton of this concealer which is great because less is more especially with concealer the less that you apply the less creasy it's gonna look under the eyes because there's less product you know there's less product to swim in those lines it's a thinner layer so that little bit got my whole eye and you can see I have no color corrector or anything underneath it brightens it definitely is a medium to full coverage I'm sure I could build it up a little bit more or if I put a corrector underneath completely full full coverage oh my gosh it's beautiful it says it gives a second skin kind of finish I 100% agree with that you guys I really, really like this concealer a lot. Yesterday, I had a fabulous experience with it, so today I'm going to double check on that and see if it really was as good as I think it is. I did just try that $90 Tom Ford concealer and I loved it. But this is kind of similar, honestly. Has very similar behavior and it's a third of the price. How beautiful is that? And as far as wear yesterday, it did eventually crease, but all concealers do. If you have those lines, you have those lines, you know, but it didn't prematurely crease. It looked really good. It looked really soft under the eyes. It didn't fade. It's an awesome concealer. I really, really like this. I'm gonna continue to test it out today since it is only my second time wearing it. You can see you only need a little bit. You don't need too much of it. You don't need to cake it on. It gives a good amount of coverage and I just love the finish of it. It truly is that kind of second skin finish if you will. I love the way that this is looking. I'm gonna set the under eyes and do everything else that I have to do and then we are gonna go on to the eyeshadow.
take a closer look at my under eyes. They've been set with powder. They look really good, you guys. A little bit of fallout down here, but we're gonna move on to what I'm most excited for in this video, the Too Faced Cinnamon Swirl Palette. They launched their holiday palette very, very early. So this is $49. You can get it right now at the Ulta website. I'll link it down below for you guys. And I buy these every single year. I typically don't pick up things from Too Faced anymore, but I buy these every year and this year was no different. I was excited about them and I'll show you them compared to the ones of the previous years. But you can see I just did a very simple, neutral, everyday kind of look. For my first impressions based on the swatches, it swatched really, really nice. There's a few shades in here that I can already tell aren't gonna be as good, as smooth, as creamy as they could be. But generally speaking, I mean, they're really nice palettes, really great color creations. So the scent, it is slightly cinnamony, cinnamon, cinnamony? Yeah, you get it. It's a it's a cinnamon swirl palette, but it's very subdued. You know, in the past, Too Faced has created these scented palettes, which are very overpowering. As soon as you open up the palette, it like smacks you in the face. That's not the case with this one. It's more on the subtle side. Packaging is cute as ever. I mean, Too Faced is the OG for cute packaging, right? And here's what the inside looks like. Lots of neutrals in this palette. Last year's, I felt like had a lot of pops. This one is very, very neutral. So it, if you're a basic B like me, you'll love it. I mean, oh, okay, so I have some of the ABH concealer on my eyelid. It worked out fine. So I'm gonna start off with my BK201. We're gonna take Flower Power, which is just a cream kind of highlight shade. It's a bit powdery. You guys see that? And I'm just gonna set underneath my eyebrow just to highlight. I'm gonna use the same brush and we're going into Muffin Top. From what I can tell, the mattes are definitely gonna be the hits in this palette and the majority of the shimmers are very, very nice. However, there are a few that might be a little bit flaky, a little bit messy and dry feeling and I'll show you what ones those are in a few moments. But how beautiful is this as a transition shade if you're around my skin tone? Really pretty, very, subtle. You know, I'm doing a basic look right now. Okay, basic palette. How to do a basic look. With an Esam V33, we are going into See Me Rollin'. The theming of these are always so cute. I'm such a sucker. I have to buy them every year. I don't care if they're literally the same palette <laughs> as last year. I love them and I feel like in these tin packaging kind of palettes, it's the best of Too Faced's formula because they come out with some pretty bad formulas. Okay, you can see they blend it out really nicely. I do get some fallout with this palette, but honestly nothing crazy for the most part. The press is not too soft. Going into Batter Up, which is the dark chocolate here. I'm using a Refer number 14 brush and you can see how pigmented that is. Kind of bring it in towards the lash line and then right in the outer third of the eyelid. I'm gonna wipe my brush off because I got my color down where I wanted it and work it out. The mattes are blending very, very nice in this palette as you can see. So this is where things get a little bit shaky here. I wanted to use the shade I'm Toasted. I mean, I'm going to use that. That's what is the center of my lid right here, but this is not as good quality as it could be. It is a bit inconsistent, a little bit flaky. I feel like you're definitely gonna have your best application using a finger. If you use a brush, I think it could get a bit messy on your face. That being said, it's absolutely gorgeous. If you use your finger, that's going to be the correct way to apply it. You're gonna get a gorgeous metallic effect. However, how a shadow applies on a brush does matter. So it's not the best. It's gonna be a little bit more scattered and messy looking on the eye, not quite as opaque. But on the eyelid, you can see it has a lot of dimension and texture to it. It's absolutely beautiful, but it's just not as smooth as I would like it to be. But I mean, it still works just fine. But there are a few shades with a similar issue in this palette. Like, gooey goodness. It's really messy. It's very, very pretty, but it takes a lot to pack it on. Sticky Fingers also gave me a similar vibe. And then Food Court, which is the brightest color, did not swatch very well. This actually was one of the worst swatching, which is disappointing. I haven't used that one on the eyelid, but 
There's about three or four shimmers that I'm like lukewarm about, I'm not too sure, want to play with them on the eyes. But the rest of the shimmers, those are the ones that are true shimmers. They don't have glitters in it. They're very, very smooth. It's a beautiful formula. It's their really textured glittery shadows that I feel like could use a little bit of work, if that makes sense. With an Isom V27, I'm going into Sweet and Spicy. I don't know if you can see, but I'm applying these shadows at a slight angle. This is one of those really creamy metallics that can be used with a brush. Quite an impressive formula, honestly. And it actually has so much coverage that it even is covering over this middle shade. That's how you know it's a good formula. It has a great opaqueness to it, just like that. You see how pretty that is? I'm gonna put down a little bit more battered up to keep the depth in this look. Just kind of patting it on there. I love how this shade gives coverage. Fabulous quality on the regular shimmers. Isom V31, I'm taking Sticky Buns. Again, Super pigmented, really smooth, really creamy. Has a lot of vibrancy down there and coverage. It is getting a bit messy though. So I'm just taking my sponge and kind of brightening back up down here. Last step, we're taking some of Gooey Goodness. Have a refer number 12 brush and this is one where I feel like it could have issues if you apply it with a brush. It's a little bit too flaky. It's not going to give you true pigment. Like look at the Okay, this is hard to show you, but like this is the swatch of it right here. It's just not giving me much, you know? But anyways, this is the eyeshadow look. It's very, very pretty. If you like neutrals, I think you will really enjoy this palette. All around, it's a really, really great palette. There's just a few shades that I feel like could be better, but I still really like it. I still will continue to buy the next one that comes out next year. A pro tip though, if you are thinking of getting this, I would maybe wait because I do find that later in the holiday season, these go on sale. So just hold off unless you're absolutely dying to have it, but it's a really nice, pretty neutral palette. I do wanna play with these three shades down here because they didn't swatch the best. So make sure you stay tuned for my September palette rankings and I'll kinda tell you my experience with them as I use this palette more. I have, oh my gosh, the oldest ones are probably expired but I have the last three previous years of the holiday palette so this was last year's pumpkin spice pumpkin spice I absolutely loved you guys some of the shadows were a little bit harder to work with but the color story was amazing and I used it all the time so that's how they compare this year's cinnamon swirl is definitely more neutral than last year's this one is superior I love the color story on this one the year before on top we have Gingerbread Extra Spicy, less warm this year. The Extra Spicy is definitely more warm, but I mean, there's lots of very similar shades, you know? And then this was probably expired and dried out at the, this point, but I kept it and it became useful. These are more similar. I would say the gingerbread spice has a little bit more deeper neutrals, a little bit more fall based colors. But anyways, nonetheless, they're very similar. <laughs> All four of them are similar. Too Faced repeats themselves every year with these palettes, but I love them. I think they're beautiful and this year's it's really great. It's a good formula, gorgeous color story, very wearable, good for the neutral girl, a great Christmas gift. Not everybody is crazy makeup collectors like most of us on my channel. <laughs> uh, so I do recommend it for the everyday person. Absolutely. It's a beautiful palette. Really fun. Okay, I'm going to do blush highlight a tiny bit of liner because we do have to finish off with the Patrick Ta mascara and I want you to be able to see what it truly does to my lashes. So just give me a minute. Well, I was going to do liner, but I decided I'd rather you actually see the true effect of the Patrick Ta mascara. So this is the major volume mascara. This is going to launch tomorrow, September 9th. So I wanted to get this up for you guys. This was sent to me in PR. Oh my god, <laughs> was not expecting this. I used this yesterday, so I've tried it before. Now keep in mind, I have very short, sparse lashes. And a video that I have on my list to do, it depends how bad you want it, is is my top five mascaras for short sparse lashes like myself. I will say my lashes are in, oh my god nobody asked for this story, but my lashes are in a much better place <laughs> than they once were and I'll talk about that in that video as well. But anyways, I'm curling my lashes with a rougher lash curler. But can we talk about how I've never found a mascara that holds a curl other than waterproof mascara, but I hate waterproof mascara because I feel like I pull my eyelashes out trying to get it off. Anyways, this mascara, it is going to be $29. 
Any other interesting facts here? I mean, here's the box that it comes in. Maximize your lashes with this intensely black ultra dramatic mascara. Custom double cut brush loads your lashes and combs through for ultimate major volume, lift, and definition. And it's supposed to also condition and support healthy lashes. So nothing about length here, just about volume and definition. It's kind of this similar Patrick Ta packaging. Here's what the wand looks like. This is typically the wand that I find I prefer. It's very very big though so here's the thing if you have short sparse lashes I, I did struggle a little bit especially with my lower lashes so I'm gonna show you it's just too big for my short lashes we got it on there we make it work but especially right here I, I do have trouble getting in here so that's with one simple coat nothing amazing now keep in mind this is a new mascara so few weeks down the road i might like this a lot more it's a bit more of a wet formula right now uh, so this isn't a set in stone review mascaras do change over time but i've also had mascaras that are amazing with the first application this mascara won't hold my curl but again no mascara does so that's a me problem not a problem with the product that looks good up there doesn't it Definitely doesn't give length, but honestly, on my lower lashes, it doesn't give me the volume that I want either. So here's like one light coat of it. Yeah, yeah, not my favorite, but it's also like not a bad mascara. Let's do a second coat now. Me like it with the second coat. It looks really good. It does actually add some length now that we've added more. I don't know. I like it. I, I don't love it. It's not a mind-blowing mascara. Like as of today, this would not go in my top five mascaras for short sparse lashes. I feel like if you have lashes to begin with, I think you would actually like this, but I'm not too sure. So don't go just by my review because normally I am an outsider when it comes to mascaras. I just don't have the base to work with to really show you how it works and the capabilities that it has if your lashes are similar to mine it's it's a nice mascara i don't know if it's worth 29 dollars. i think there are some more affordable mascaras that do a little bit more and one thing that i'm noticing as i'm continuing to layer and layer and layer what i'm liking about this is it's not getting clumpy i still have each lash defined which is a really really good thing that a lot of mascaras can't do so i'm definitely not writing this one off i want to use it the next few weeks to see if my thoughts on it change but as of now second use freshly opened short sparse lashes it's a decent mascara okay, i'm gonna do lips i don't know do i want to do full C's? i'm not sure okay and then you'll see what i do bye So here is the final look. This is the I, I don't want to put heat on my hair look. So it's just it's gonna be like this it's fine <laughs> anyways so here are my thoughts on the three main products the concealer from abh i think is bomb so far i'm really really into this i think you guys will really like this concealer a lot so i am recommending this the Too faced cinnamon swirl i really like this palette too now it does have very neutral wearable colors that are easily repetitive within your collection but if you're like me and you typically like these palettes i think you will like it it's not a unique palette it's not a palette that you need to have but they did a nice job with it can't wait to play with this one some more and then the patrick ta mascara it's really nice even off camera you guys i did do another layer of the mascara what is really special about this is the way that it defines each lash and doesn't clump up so i think if this is going to dry the way i want it to dry like most mascaras i'm really going to like this one it could go either way though it's not a necessity it is $29 I do think you can get some great drugstore mascaras as well but I did hear from one of my friends who has thicker longer lashes than myself she loves this mascara for me I'm kind of in the middle about it but there definitely are some pros to it so that is all I have for today's video I hope you guys enjoyed it if you aren't subscribed to my channel already I would love it if you would consider taking the time to do so and I will see you all in the next one you guys have a good one